Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining today's webinar, Transitioning from New Relic Servers to New Relic Infrastructure. Today, we have Aaron Newcomb, Senior Manager and Product Marketing uh, speaking, as well as Karishma Irani, who's a Product Manager for Infrastructure. Before we get started, I wanted to go over a few housekeeping items. Uh, today's webinar will be recorded and we'll send a recording to you after the fact. You'll receive a recording link in your inbox. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them as we go along. Uh, we'll get to them at the end with a uh, Q&A session. And if you have any additional questions, we'll be happy to follow up with you after the fact. You can send them to us at webinars at newrelic.com. And moreover, if we don't get to all of your questions today, we will follow up individually. Additionally, we'll have a survey at the end of the presentation uh, for any feedback that you may have. And uh, again, if you weren't able to ask any questions during the webinar. So with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Aaron and he'll kick us off. Great, thanks Jackson. Uh, so <clears throat> as you might guess, today we're gonna be talking about uh, the transition that we're making both as a company and hopefully you as well as a customer from New Relic servers to New Relic infrastructure. And just to give you an idea about what we're going to talk about today, uh, we're going to talk about the, an overview of exactly what's happening with servers and when. Um, we'll also give you an overview of infrastructure in case this is the first time you've really looked at it or maybe you're uh, confused about what it is and what the comparisons are. Uh, we'll talk about directly the comparisons between the products as well as do a demo so you can see um, all of the differences and all of the great features uh, that infrastructure brings. And we'll talk about some of the best ways you can transition from servers to infrastructure. We'll give you some really helpful tips in terms of what you should do, best practices, things that you should um, be on the lookout for, and how you can make that transition a lot easier. We'll give you some places to go for more information and follow up. And then, um, as Jackson said, we'll have some time for Q&A. And I really encourage people as they're listening to what we're saying, if a question comes uh, up and uh, you wanna ask it, go ahead and ask it then. If you're like me, uh, a couple minutes later, you'll forget what you wanted to ask. So take the opportunity, uh, go to the uh, control or the uh, question um, widget and uh, ask your question. We'd really appreciate it. So before we get too far into this, uh, I did wanna go through and clarify, there have been some questions that have come up about what exactly is going away, when it's going away, what's affected, what it looks like. So I do wanna spend just a few minutes talking about uh, those things to clarify any misconceptions that may be out there. So we actually uh, announced back in June, um, we sent some notification out to, to you, our customers, that New Relic Servers was going to go end of life um, and the replacement product for that is New Relic Infrastructure. Um, along with that, at the same time, we're also retiring some of our legacy alerting features that were available um, in some of the uh, products that we had, especially in some of the, the um, uh, light products. So some of those legacy alerting features will be going away and the replacement product for those is uh, called New Relic Alerts. Uh, with the new relic in front of it and that's really a cross-platform capability and in fact if you want to know more about the legacy alerting features moving over to new relic alerts and what the benefits are of new relic alerts i'd highly recommend that you register for another webinar that happens on thursday where we'll be talking about exactly that but for, for today we're going to focus on new relic servers so when is this all happening well um, there's two dates you need to keep in mind. The first one is November 14th of this year, and this only affects customers that don't have an active subscription with New Relic for another product. Um, if you have no subscriptions whatsoever with New Relic and you're just using New Relic servers or some of the other products that don't require subscription, um, then New Relic servers and legacy alerting will be going away on November 14th of this year. However, if you have at least one subscription to any of our products, then um, the, the, those products will not be going away until May 15th of 2018, which should give you um, enough time to transition over to the newer products. So keep that in mind. As long as you have at least one subscription, you won't be affected by the COL until May 15th of 2018. You may also be asking, well, what does that mean when you say the product's going away? And just to clarify, what that means is that we won't be collecting any more data 
from the New Relic server's agent in this case. Um, we won't be collecting data, and actually in the interface, uh, the product won't be accessible anymore. So where you're used to going in the interface now and clicking on the server's uh, uh, tab to get into the server's product and take a look at what's going on um, with your servers, that won't be accessible anymore. So that information, you won't be able to access, access that tab at all um, as of those dates. <clears throat> So the big question, why are we doing this? Well, we've fielded a lot of questions from customers um, and we know this is a really sensitive issue. Um, we actually know that um, there's a lot of people that really like servers, they like what it does, they're happy with what it does. Um, and on top of that, it's a free product, so it's really cool. And it really sucks that we're you know, taking that away from our customers, just to be honest, we feel that absolutely 100%. But there's some good reasons why we're doing that. Um, number one, uh, if you've ever had to juggle multiple things, you know it's pretty difficult to keep a couple of things going at the same time. And that's really what we're doing right now with New Relic servers and having a competitive product within our own platform called New Relic Infrastructure. It takes a lot of time and money and people resources to keep um, all of those things going. And we simply can't move forward and keep everything going all at once. Besides that, really, um, we wanna focus on developing the improvements that our customers have asked for. And the platform where we can best do that is New Relic Infrastructure. Um, it integrates with the rest of the platform, as you'll see um, in just a minute. Um, it provides an opportunity to do some really advanced features, like some things in the cloud with AWS uh, integrations and other integrations into um, on-host services, like databases and things like that. These are all features that we really couldn't implement in New Relic servers. And so we decided to uh, focus all of our engineering efforts on New Relic infrastructure. Um, and we're doing that in a huge, huge way. So I think you're gonna be really pleased with some of the new features we're gonna talk about in just a minute. So as I said, uh, infrastructure is really integrated into the platform. We call this our digital intelligence platform. And it really starts with uh, the ability to collect all of this data across multiple products and give you access to that so that you can mine that data for whatever kind of information is important to your business. So it's not just monitoring servers, it's also monitoring your applications, monitoring your mobile platform, monitoring your um, browser applications, and then seeing how, uh, how those things come together across various regions and um, uh, with our synthetics product. So it's really about the platform. If you're running uh, application performance monitoring alone without knowing the impact to your server environment, then that's a huge miss because there could be something there that's having a huge impact that you wanna take advantage of. Likewise, if you're only monitoring your infrastructure, but you don't know how that maps back to the applications you support, um, that's not good either because you can't take action, action on a problem that may be affecting uh, your customers and their experience with your product or your brand. So you really have to be able to paint the whole picture and infrastructure is one piece of that whole platform. Um, in addition to that, because it integrates with um, automation tools and orchestration tools like Puppet, Chef and Ansible, we're really trying to make it easy for you to do this in a dynamic way because we know that your infrastructure is changing over time and changing rapidly. Um, and also being able to integrate into cloud platforms like Amazon Web Services um, really makes it uh, uh, um, uh, beneficial for you as, as people are moving to the cloud, taking advantage of those services, having something that's deeply integrated into AWS, for example, is really beneficial to our customers. Not only that, but you can actually run uh, infrastructure on-prem, you can run it in, the, in multiple cloud platforms. Um, so we don't limit you in that way. Um, again, that paints a holistic picture for you as the customer, so you know perhaps how your on-prem database is affecting your applications that are running in the cloud. So what is New Relic Infrastructure? What does it do and what are the benefits that you get out of it? Well, briefly, New Relic Infrastructure, as I've mentioned, is a way to monitor all your hosts um, across uh, multiple platforms. This ability to scale across diverse environment is really, really important. Uh, to our customers because it helps them, again, paint that complete picture so they know exactly how one thing is impacting another. Um, it also allows you to take advantage of things like uh, dynamic changing infrastructure that happens in the cloud. As you scale up, we like to say scale up for your biggest day, for example. Uh, biggest example of that would be maybe a retail environment scaling up for uh, the holiday season. Um, those things happen sometimes on a daily basis where you're adding hundreds, if not thousands of hosts, maybe scaling those back. You need a platform that can monitor those without taking uh, a lot of intervention on your part because that costs you time and money. 
Um, it also allows you to eliminate data silos, data silos by being able to connect the problems that you're having in your infrastructure or an opportunity that you see there with your other applications um, and your other app, uh, uh, your mobile and browser environments as well. So you again, you can get that complete picture and take advantage of uh, changes that may be happening that may have an impact. That's our goal with New Relic Infrastructure. Um, at this point, I want to turn it over to Karishma. She's going to talk a little bit about the history of the product and start really diving into the differentiation between uh, New Relic servers and New Relic infrastructure. Karishma? Thanks, Aaron. Um, hi, so I'm Karishma. Um, I'm one of the product managers for New Relic infrastructure, um, and I'm pretty sure I've interacted with some of you already um, attending the call today. So um, sort of resonating um, and um, just sort of revalidating um, what Aaron touched upon with why we're making the shift. So with servers, servers was really intended to be um, sort of an add-on with APM to provide more insight for our APM customers into what's happening across their servers. But we received a lot of great organic customer feedback over the last few years about how our customers want enhancements to the servers platform to run and support their AWS infrastructure, um, their GCP, Azure, as well as um, uh, services that support their servers, such as Cassandra, MySQL, Nginx, et cetera. Um, in order to invest in this fully as a company, um, New Relic infrastructure was um, incepted um, as, uh, uh, from an acquisition of a company called Opsmatic um, late in 2015. And in less than a year, on, in, Nove on November, in November 2016, we GA'd New Relic infrastructure after running a successful beta with over 500 deployed customers. So we launched New Relic infrastructure on November 16, 2016 at FutureStack San Francisco, following which uh, we've, had, we've seen an amazing uptake in engagement in um, adoption and received some amazing customer feedback, um, which led to sort of two primary um, milestones since then in um, the product feature life cycle. The first one was in March when we added a few advanced alerting features in addition to, of course, making minor improvements to our UI, um, en enhancing performance um, and page load times, et cetera. But uh, we added advanced alerting um, features such as host not reporting, which some of you may be familiar uh, with in servers as server not reporting. However, this is a completely new mechanism built from the ground up, and it's been built. Uh, this new system has been built um, with the feedback from the server not reporting feature in mind. So, as the product manager who led this feature, I actually went through the the forums on the online technical community and um, read complaints and read feedback about um, false positives in the server not reporting feature. And we um, hence designed this system for host not reporting within infrastructure to be a lot more stable and to avoid false positives. Um, similar to that, another feature for advanced alerting within infrastructure that we introduced is the process running alerts. Um, so this feature, um, and it was one of the top feature requests uh, in the legacy server system. Uh, process running allows you to set alert conditions to be alerted on a number of processes, alert me if a particular process on a particular host stops running or any of my Kafka processes on any of my um, US East 1A host stops running. So notify me when processes stop running, start running, less than X processes are running, more than X processes are running. And this, of course, scales to your container processes too. So um, if you if you want to create an alert condition to ensure that um, you at least have um, a single instance of a critical process running on every single um, node in a particular cluster, you can achieve that today by using the process running alerts within New Relic infrastructure. Um, similarly, recently, um, last month actually, we launched a few um, enhancements or a few new features inside New Relic infrastructure that actually expand the adoption of New Relic infrastructure across our customers' platforms. Um, the first one being on-host integrations. Uh, some of you may be familiar uh, with this concept of plugins that we have within New Relic infrastructure, within New Relic. 
Um, these are similar to that, except they're tightly integrated with our New Relic infrastructure product and fully 100% written by and maintained by our own engineering team uh, for New Relic infrastructure. So we launched our first three on-host integrations that include MySQL, Cassandra, and Nginx, um, along with an SDK that allows our customers to write custom integrations for anything they may, they may want to monitor um, on their hosts and see data for within New Relic infrastructure. In addition to that, uh, we also have our first version of a containerized agent. So we understand that some of our customers have security constraints uh, where they aren't um, they aren't allowed to they, they are restricted from running third party software um, on their host itself. Uh, our containerized agent for New Relic infrastructure allows you to deploy um, the New Relic infrastructure agent as a Docker image and um, monitor all your containers as well as the underlying hosts. Similar to this, it actually allows you to run on container OSs such as CoreOS, Rancho OS, and any other OSs that may lack a traditional package manager, thus allowing you to um, expand your um, adoption of New Relic infrastructure. Cool. Uh, so with that, let's dive into uh, some very concise um, sort of the, um, comparison between New Relic infrastructure and the legacy New Relic servers feature. So um, as most of you uh, should be familiar with New Relic servers, I'll sort of focus on the infrastructure component of it. So with OS support, um, as you know, we stopped enhancing and increasing support for New Relic servers um, a while ago when the company de decided to shift its focus um, on um, engineering New Relic infrastructure. So with that, New Relic infrastructure supports um, uh, in addition to a lot of legacy OSs, it supports modern operating systems. Um, almost every flavor of Linux, Windows 8, 12, 16, um, as well as um, it comes with native AWS integration out of the box. And I'll demonstrate what that means uh, shortly. Data retention in Insights. So um, if you're not familiar with New Relic Insights, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's essentially New Relic's um, business analytics uh, data store system where it stores all your raw metrics and data that we collect across all the New Relic products and um, allows you to run queries on them, custom queries, as well as create dashboards across products, across teams. Um, with New Relic infrastructure, all the data that we collect, which currently is at a five second granularity, is available in New Relic Insights for no additional cost. Um, and depending on the subscription that you have, um, and New Relic Infrastructure has two subscriptions, Essentials and Pro. So depending on the subscription you have, you get three to 13 months of data retention in Insights. Another feature of New Relic Infrastructure uh, as compared to servers is that servers focused on basic uh, server metrics, CPU load memory, so the compute metrics. Infrastructure strives to provide you with additional context about those metrics by providing you with events, change log events, especially config changes. Um, so you can see what's changing in real time and what its impact on the metrics are, or vice versa, what, what caused this change in my met metrics. Um, another interesting feature of New Relic infrastructure that some of our customers that are especially focused on the compliance and security aspect of things find useful uh, is the inventory. The real-time inventory is, uh, can be essentially thought of as an image or a snapshot of your entire infrastructure and your host config what's installed and running across your host in real-time um, that allows you, you to search through and find an exact version of a package and where it's deployed. Um, so it really lets you narrow down and be aware of the state of your infrastructure at all times. Dynamic targeting. Um, so with servers, um, some of you may be familiar with the feature uh, labels. Labels allowed you to tag your, your servers or label your servers with attributes allowing you to slice and dice it in the UI. With infrastructure, these labels uh, are now known as tags and are auto Im imported from your EC2 environment, as well as you can custom tag your hosts or any entity such as containers in the config file itself. 
um, allowing you for the, uh, allowing you to um, have the same functionality, but it also has the dynamic aspect to it as hosts come online and go offline. Um, and this dynamic targeting functionality is actually carried over to our load conditions as well as our filter presets uh, that I'll demo shortly. Um, I already touched upon our AWS native support, but infrastructure um, has um, our native support for AWS, thus importing your EC2 tags um, and providing for a lot of uh, Amazon support. SaaS integrations. So we currently have um, approximately 20 out of the box integrations uh, for AWS that um, have um, automated dashboards that get created that monitor your metrics, events, etc for your different AWS services that are supporting your hosts and your EC2 environments. Um, process running alerts and host running alerts that um, I previously spoke about, as well as our on-host integrations and SDK that allow for you to monitor your services that support your host, but not necessarily run on your host itself. So um, this should give you sort of a, a brief overview of what to expect with um, New Relic infrastructure and how it has um, superior functionality when compared to New Relic servers and expands on the basic concept of compute metrics. Um, so with this, I'll dive right into a demo, a quick demo of New Relic infrastructure. Having said that, I'll keep the demo brief and focus on the aspects that are new um, or that our service customers find most useful when they check out New Relic infrastructure. Um, so this right here is New Relic infrastructure. Um, the agent installation is uh, very simple. It's very quick. Um, it's a lightweight agent. And as Aaron previously mentioned, we have install modules with Chef, Puppet, and Ansible to simplify your installation. So once you install new relic infrastructure across your hosts, not just your application servers, all your hosts, um, you should see your metrics flowing in. So currently this, this account has 516 hosts reporting to new relic infrastructure. And I actually have a single alert condition that's active right now. So let's go and narrow in on the host that's witnessing the alert condition. So this is the compute page that sort of shows me the CPU load memory metrics for my hosts. But in addition to that, I want to um, point out this particular uh, events timeline bar that we have on the top, which are the events I referenced earlier. So I'm actually going to go back and narrow in on my Elasticsearch production cluster. And as you can see, I'm currently experiencing an alert condition with a CPU and a load spike. If I want to get a basic idea of what's going on or what what changed in across my host and my host config um, to better understand and narrow in on this alert condition, I can simply uh, scroll across the events timeline and I can see that right before the alert condition triggered, there was a package event at 11.22 a.m. And prior to that, there was a session event at 11.20 a.m. So you can see how I already have a pretty good idea of what could have gone wrong or what's going on across my Elasticsearch production cluster for me to um, for this alert violation to be triggered. So let's go ahead and click on the events timeline, which brings me to the events page. Uh, so this is a new feature with New Relic infrastructure that previously was not available in servers, um, where we track any delta or change events across your hosts. Um, and load them as events in the UI for you to slice and dice by and get better context with your metrics. So I can see that at 11.20 AM, a user by the username Elsorni connected to this particular host. Um, and at 11.22, a package by the name of account service was installed on that very same host. Um, if I'd like, I can expand the event to sort of see what the delta is, the old value and the new value or view an inventory, which I'll touch upon uh, shortly. But that's basically what caused the alert condition to be triggered. So you can see how um, expanding sort of your server monitoring aspect from just basic metrics to understanding events correlated with your metrics allows you to narrow in on the issue and achieve a faster MTTR and MTTD. 
Um, so with that, I'll actually touch upon inventory, which is um, another distinguishing feature of new relic infrastructure I, I referenced earlier. So um, let's say my security team has been informed of a new zero day vulnerability, um, primarily open SSL. Um, in a traditional world with servers installed across my um, hosts, across my servers, I would have to possibly write, run a script to grab across those hosts and find that find out where OpenSSL is deployed, what version of OpenSSL is running, and um, I would have to dedicate a team to focus on this for multiple days, if not a day. Uh, with New Relic infrastructure and its ability to track your invent inventory in real time, I can simply type in OpenSSL and it returns in real time. It searched through 516 hosts to return all the packages of OpenSSL I have deployed across my hosts with their associated releases and versions. So if I know that this is the particular outdated version of OpenSSL, I can simply click on 13 hosts to get a list of those hosts to that need the patch deployed to them, thus addressing the zero day vulnerability before it actually becomes an issue. In addition to that, we also have our dedicated network, storage and processes tabs, which allow me to monitor parts of my infrastructure based on the processes that I care about. So let's say I want to monitor all my hosts in my US East 1A region. And notice that these tags are actually auto imported from my EC2 integration after I install the infrastructure agent on my EC2 instances and configure the integration. Um, but in addition to that, I am interested in um, monitoring just my containers. I can simply go ahead and click on contained equals true, which allows me to now see all my processes, my container processes across my hosts. And if I want to go ahead and group this by container image, I can do that. Now I'm monitoring the, the performance of the processes that are running as containers across these container images. Um, let's narrow in on a particular container image that has a lot of containers associated with it. So I simply click on it to filter down to it. And if I want to understand the distribution of all the containers running this particular image, I can group by, which essentially allows me to facet by host name. It shows me that I have 130 processes running as a container running this image on this particular host. If I want to ensure that the number of processes doesn't fall below, let's say 100 processes or 10 processes, I can go ahead and create an alert by simply clicking on the chart. This too is a distinguishing feature of New Relic infrastructure where you're no longer required to navigate to alerts on the top right and lose the context of the metric or the information that you were viewing. You can simply stay in the context and click on the graph to create an alert. So I'm going to create an alert on process running. And I want to create an alert on trigger an alert when fewer than 20 processes are running on any matching host for one minute. That's how dynamic our alerting conditions are. In addition to that, if any new processes matching these particular tags come online, they will automatically be monitored by this particular um, alert condition. Similarly, if any processes go offline, they will automatically get removed from the alert condition. Um, I just want to give another quick example of an alert condition. Um, let's take, for example, my Elasticsearch production cluster that's currently experiencing an alert condition. Um, if I want to create an alert condition on the load for this particular cluster, I can simply click on create an alert and you can see that it's currently creating an alert condition for I can create an alert condition for any of these metrics on the six hosts that currently match these tags, except what I'm actually creating an alert condition on is any host that today and or in the future match these particular tags. So if I have all six of these hosts go offline, the alert condition will automatically stop monitoring them. And similarly, if I have any new hosts that come online that match these tags, 
the, this particular alert condition that I set up will automatically start monitoring them. Therefore, the biggest differenti differentiation between servers and infrastructure is that you, you're no longer forced to think about your infrastructure from a single server perspective and remember host names. You can now just think about tags and the different attributes that, you, that are associated with your hosts. And if you have a good lexicon, uh, this should be simple to do. Lastly, I want to touch upon integrations. So integrations is a feature that's um, available within New Relic infrastructure with your pro subscription, and it provides you with all of these AWS services and dashboards that you can monitor out of the box with them. So they're very simple to set up. All you need to provide is you need to provide a read only IAM role to New Relic, provide us with the ARN, click on configure, and these dashboards get created out of the box for you. So if I want to see what any of these dashboards look like, here's what my ELB dashboard looks like for this particular account. I can see all of these metrics for request per second, HTTP errors, backend response time, and a lot of these metrics are of course common, um, are uh, common with CloudWatch metrics. But in addition to that, you also get the context of events and inventory for your AWS services. Similar to your AWS services, you have the on-host integrations for MySQL, Cassandra, and Nginx, an example of which looks like this. These two are out-of-the-box dashboards that come created for you if you configure the integration instantly. Um, and all of this is possible because this data lives in New Relic Insights. Um, in addition to this, you can also leverage the data in Insights for running custom queries. So let's go back to my Elasticsearch production cluster. If I go ahead and group this by AWS region, okay, this is running just in one particular region, but it's showing me the average. It's showing me the average of my CPU, my load, my memory. If I wanna run a custom query to either see the min or the max, or even exclude a particular host, I can simply click on this view in insights icon, which opens insights, with the query pre-populated for me. So I can go ahead and modify this query in any way I please, run it and or add it to an existing dashboard I may have. So now I could have a single dashboard for my team that's monitoring my APM data, my infrastructure data, uh, my synthetics browser, et cetera, all of this information in one single place. However, actually that's a good segue into, my, into the next thing I'd like to demo. If you're an existing APM customer and you subscribe to infrastructure, you get access to the health map for New Relic. The, the health map was essentially um, an ideation uh, from, uh, from feature requests from our large enterprise customers and customers with a lot of teams um, monitoring a, a large number of applications across a large number of hosts. This is a single view that allows you to see um, the view of your applications through the host context and the view of your host through the application context. So I'm currently viewing all of my all of my um, hosts grouped up by application. I can expand this to show my metrics as well as show the hosts on this. So if any of my hosts were alerting, they'd be red boxes here and I can see that my application's fine. Similarly, if I clicked on hosts and related applications, I'm now viewing the large boxes indicate individual hosts and the tiny boxes are the applications that are deployed on that host, whether they're deployed in a container or on the host itself. So if you've ever faced an issue with, is it a dev problem or an ops problem? You now have a quick answer to that, where you can see whether the host is loading or the applications on the host are loading. Um, that's a quick overview of New Relic infrastructure. Um, I hope it uh, did that did a good job of sort of de demoing some of the distinguishing features infrastructure adds to uh, and expands upon from the legacy servers feature. Cool. Um, so, all right, I'm impressed. Now what? How do I go about transitioning my existing infrastructure from New Relic servers to infrastructure? Um, we have created a guide 
for transitioning from new from new relic servers to new relic infrastructure, um, the link to which we will share at the end of this presentation. However, um, a few quick tips. Um, start by installing the new relic infrastructure agent. It's super lightweight if you're concerned about overhead from the agent. Uh, we actually have publicly documented and published numbers in our um, public documentation and our customer facing documentation um, to address those concerns. Um, the agent requires no configuration. You have the option to provide um, customized configuration, but it requires no configuration. And we also have Chef, Puppet, and Ansible install modules to simplify the installation for you. I definitely recommend installing the agent on your app servers to correlate APM and infrastructure data through health maps and through the applications themselves. So basically, if you're an existing APM customer and you install the infrastructure agent on your app servers, the links for the hosts inside of APM should now link you to New Relic infrastructure and provide additional context. So start by installing the agent. Um, second, configure your EC2 integration to auto import your host tags and host meta metadata that allow you to slice and dice, filter your uh, UI, as well as create alert conditions. However, if you have an on-prem infrastructure or you wanna add additional tags to your um, cloud infrastructure, you can add custom tags through the agent config. Next, Start by exploring the metrics, events, and inventory that you have at your disposal. Um, play around with it, check out the events that we have, um, check out the inventory feature, better idea of exactly what you want to create an alert condition on. Next, create an alert condition based on these tags. Um, so New Relic Infrastructure, in case you missed it in the demo, uh, really focuses on the aspect of moving away from individual host names um, because we have customers running containers with a lifetime of 20 seconds. It's impossible to care about a single container ID in that aspect. Similarly, we have customers with auto scale AWS groups. Um, therefore, we're focused on the concept of creating alert conditions, creating filter sets based on tags. Of course, go ahead and create a safe filter set. Next, explore the health map. The health map is really New Relic's um, initiative to tying APM and infrastructure data together um, in a sensible way, in a single view to provide our customers with quick answers about whether it's their hosts that are having the issue, that are experiencing the, the alert, or whether it's the application itself, and or what the impact of one could be on the other. And lastly, access all your infrastructure data and insights um, modify your queries, cr write, your, write custom queries, create custom dashboards, as well as um, leverage our new NRQL, NoCL alerting feature, where if you write a custom query for new relic infrastructure data um, within Insights, you can actually create an alert condition on that. So with that, I'll actually pass it off to pass it back to Aaron to uh, share with us some customer success stories uh, for customers that have been early adopters of New Relic infrastructure. Great, thanks, Krishma. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, get those questions in. There's already been a flurry of questions, and we'll try to get to as many of those as we can. But if you have questions, take an opportunity <clears throat> to ask those now before we start wrapping up. Uh, so in terms of the uh, first customer I want to talk about, one of the things that Krishma just mentioned actually is the uh, advantage that you get by having your data, uh, both for your infrastructure and your applications, uh, located within New Relic so that you can use the product we call Insights to create custom dashboards or see whatever data is relevant for your particular environment, your company's needs, or your application needs. And this is exactly what Gannett did actually. Uh, so if you don't know, uh, Gannett, they're a uh, media company. They own a lot of di different digital properties. Uh, probably their premier property that people uh, associate them with is USA Today. So if you are familiar with the newspaper or the website, um, uh, then, you, then you're you familiar with Gannett. One of the things that they did uh, during the 2016 national election is they actually use New Relic uh, to monitor what was going on. If you can imagine, there was a lot of um, activity going on that night, to say the least, um, and they had to keep up with it all and make sure that their customers 
um, and the general public could get to the stories that they wanted to read and that they wanted to follow as quickly as possible without interruption. And they use New Relic to do that. They don't just use New Relic infrastructure. Actually, they use uh, all of our products and they're able to do things like being able to scale their cloud production uh, um, releases well the uh, uh, well, the impact is going on. In other words, they can scale dynamically, as we just mentioned, to address any kind of uh, um, additional demand that they might be seeing. Um, they're also able to decentralize their monitoring, get that into a single tool, and be able to uh, manage hundreds of media brands with one single tool, and also, the, uh, also enable them to reduce their costs. Let's talk briefly also about France television. And I'm sorry, I don't have a, uh, I don't speak um, French, so I apologize. I probably mispronounced that. Um, but basically, they're uh, experiencing what a lot of companies are experiencing today, which is they have, uh, I believe, seven or eight uh, television channels that they run in France. And a lot of their content is moving to digital. So it used to be people would watch these shows on their television. And now a lot of the media is being consumed digitally uh, in, in a streaming format. And they want to provide the best customer experience possible uh, when people go to those sites and start streaming a video. So they're actually using, uh, also they're also using all of New Relic's products. Um, and the biggest benefit that they see out of this is that they're able to get a consolidated view if something goes wrong or if they want to investigate a way to make their application work better, they can actually get a consolidated view by running our products and using New Relic infrastructure in particular to monitor what's going on with all of their hosts. The other thing that they really love about it is that um, when there, a problem does crop up, you don't have one team uh, you know, blaming the other or back and forth, um, it really helps them get to resolution much quicker by having a single source of truth that they can go to and say, nope, let's take a look at this dashboard and see exactly what's going on. And it also keeps their DevOps team able to support their applications um, and be much more agile in terms of rolling out new code or uh, uh, making a change to an application that might improve their performance. So where do you go from here? Um, the first thing I would suggest if you are a servers customer today and um, you're having a hard time figuring out how to get from point A to point B is to schedule some time with your rep, uh, give them a call, send them an email and say, hey, can we set up some time to go through our account and see what this transition actually looks like um, so that we can get there um, by uh, that May deadline that I mentioned before. Um, the other one is to go to our OTC um, um, website and check out some of the documents that we've posted there. Some of them we've mentioned already, which is the FAQ. Um, it has a, answers to a lot of questions. So if you did, if we didn't get to your question or if something comes up later that you can't figure out uh, or, or don't know the answer to, check out that FAQ first because we spent a lot of time trying to address uh, the most important questions that our customers have asked us. And then the transition guide as well that uh, Krishma mentioned, which basically goes through all of the things we mentioned today, as well as those tips for getting uh, transition from servers to infrastructure is available at docs.newrelic.com. I'd highly encourage you to go check that out as well. Um, and if you haven't tried New Relic infrastructure, you can actually uh, go ahead and get a trial free for 30 days. Um, there's there's no obligation on your part. I would highly recommend you check it out or better yet, set up a proof of concept uh, with one of our engineers that can actually walk you through, here's what we need to do. Here's the problems that we're seeing. Is this something that infrastructure can help us with? Um, and we'll help you set up that proof of concept that'll walk you through exactly. And that way there's no questions whether infrastructure is gonna be beneficial for you or not. You'll actually be able to see it as part of the proof of concept. And it's a great way to actually see if infrastructure is gonna meet uh, your business needs or not. Lastly, there's a lot of things on our website. The, we have additional webinars, additional documents, all sorts of things that you can take advantage of. So I'd highly encourage you just to go to the website, newrelic.com slash infrastructure and check all of those things out. Uh, also, I want to point out that we have an event coming up, Future Stack in New York. Um, I would, that's on September 13th and 14th. If you're not registered for that, and you want an opportunity to come see these things in person or try out the software yourself or talk to an engineer or talk to Karishma or myself, we'll be there. Um, sign up, come check it out and check out all the other um, application uh, um, software that we offer as well. 
not just infrastructure, but we're going to have some really exciting announcements um, at Future Stack. And so if you get a chance, definitely come. You'll also be able to hear from our featured speaker speakers, Malcolm Gladwell, Ray Wong, and of course, our very own Lou Cerny. So just a reminder um, on those dates again, uh, for people that don't have an active subscription to um, uh, any of our products, they will lose access to New Relic servers on November 14th, 2017. And if you do have at least one subscription to any um, New Relic product, uh, that date is actually May 15th, 2018. So you have some time to take a look at this and make changes and see how this is gonna impact your environment. So with that, I'd like to thank everybody for sticking with us today. And I'd like to open it up at this time for a few questions. Great, thank you. Thank you both for the presentation. Uh, we've had a few more questions come in. And uh, again, uh, we have quite a few people on the line. If you have any questions that you didn't think of during the presentation or you have any, um, you know, while we're going through Q&A, please go, go and, uh, and submit them. Again, if we don't have time to answer them today, we will uh, follow up with you individually. Uh, first and foremost, uh, do you have a puppet module to deploy infrastructure, uh, or can you recommend a third par party module? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so in order to make our installation, our customer's installation for infra infrastructure simpler, we do actually have Chef Puppet and um, Ansible modules available um, on our website that have been custom built by our own team. So in order to access them, simply go to docs.newrelic.com, navigate to infrastructure, and under the agent installation section, you should be able to see Chef, Puppet, and Ansible install modules. Great, thank you. Uh, so someone asks, it's difficult for me to understand the pricing for my specific situation. Uh, where can they find more details or you know, how do they you know, figure that out for their exact, exact situation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so two points. The first one, pricing can be confusing. Uh, in case you're not familiar, we um, infrastructure supports the compute unit pricing model, which is essentially pricing our customers for the size of their instances based on the number of cores and RAM uh, for the number of hours that those instances are online for. So we wouldn't charge you the same for a T2 micro that's running for a few hours as we would for a C3 extra large or an on-prem machine that's running for 750 hours, which is essentially the whole month. Um, so that's primarily to save uh, pricing for our customers. However, uh, we do cap our pricing at a maximum of at, at a maximum value, which is 720 for essential customers and 1440 per instance for pro customers. Um, therefore, if you have uh, an instance that has um, larger number of cores and RAM than um, the maximum thing we have on our website, uh, that would be the cap for you, as well as you can opt for host-based pricing, which is basically paying the fixed price that I just mentioned. Um, however, the most optimal route, um, in case you do not want to go through the pricing website, because I understand we've received some feedback um, on the UI there, uh, would be to get in touch with the rep and or uh, just create a ticket at support.newrelic.com and we will address your pricing concerns. Great. Uh, when will there be an ESXi and Kubernetes uh, support in infrastructure? Ah, Kubernetes. Um, I was really expecting a Google Cloud Platform question or an Azure question before the Kubernetes question. Um, yeah, so um, with respect to containers, uh, today infrastructure monitors your containers um, by simply being installed at the host level itself. So basically, we collect basic uh, container metrics. We associate it with uh, container images, container labels, um, the host itself, as well as your applications. So you can actually monitor and create alert conditions for containers running a particular application. All of this without requiring to install the infrastructure agent inside the container. Um, however, with respect to Kubernetes integration, which uh, is essentially monitoring your pods, monitoring more detailed inventory like etcd, fleets, CDL, um, these are things we are definitely exploring. And um, with respect to timeline, all I can say is uh, keep a lookout over the next few months, um, essentially the next quarter, 
uh, because we definitely hope to improve and enhance our container ecosystem support them. Great. Uh, so we have a lot of questions coming in and I appreciate everybody for uh, for submitting them again. If we aren't able to get to them immediately, we'll follow up with you via email. Uh, so I, I see there are examples of Amazon. Uh, is there Google Cloud also supported in infrastructure? Yeah, so um, this is an important thing to clarify. So <clears throat> actually, um, we also get this question for on prem. Um, I think because uh, AWS is so popular with our customers that um, there's a little bit of confusion around this. But actually, you can run infrastructure on prem, you can run it on AWS, you can run it on Google Cloud Platform, you can run it on Azure, you can run it on Pivotal, you can run it on Rackspace. Basically, anywhere where your hosts are running, um, essentially, you can run New Relic infrastructure. So um, I just want to clear that up. No matter where you're running, you can run the agent. Now, I would say the vast majority of our customers are either running on AWS or moving to AWS. And since we uh, develop our features to respond to our customers' needs, you know, they've been asking, hey, can we get deeper integration into AWS, which is understandable. So that's where we focused uh, some of our engineering effort early on. Again, the product's only, what, eight months old at this point, nine months old. So we've pro focused a lot of time on AWS because that's what our customers have been asking for. Um, but I would just say, that those uh, deeper integrations that you see with AWS, um, if you find those valuable on other platforms like Azure and Google Cloud, um, stay tuned. Uh, so that's something we're definitely working on. And in fact, if you're able to go to FutureStack New York, I would say uh, pay attention there because we may have some announcements that you'll be interested in. Great. Uh, so we get some, do we get some of the same features with Windows hosts? Uh, in the demo, there were a lot of Linux specific features. Um, yes, absolutely. So New Relic infrastructure does have uh, support for um, a, a, a few Windows OSs. However, um, a few features such as a few metrics uh, for your Windows host may appear as zero in the UI, and that's simply because Windows uh, and Linux don't have the exact same metrics for the hosts. Um, however, um, I would I would summarize it as our Windows support being 80% um, in parity with our Linux support, uh, just based on our customer base. Great. So uh, we just have a few minutes for um, you know last last questions here. Um, we already have the agent installed on our app servers and see data in servers. Uh, should I see data in the infrastructure tab? Uh, you know, can I run them alongside each other? How does that work? Yeah, um, yeah, that's actually a great question. So I should have clarified that early on. Uh, new Relic infrastructure is an entirely new agent. So it's a, an entirely new agent written in Golang, built from the ground up with, from, by an entirely new team at New Relic. Um, and therefore, the agent that you probably have to monitor your server um, currently installed that's populating data in the servers tab is not the New Relic infrastructure agent. Um, so in order to get data to start reporting in the infrastructure tab, you will have to install the New Relic infrastructure agent on your host and then access the information in the tab. As for running them side by side, if you already have an APM agent or servers agent or any other agent installed on your servers, you can seamlessly um, uh, you can seamlessly install the New Relic infrastructure agent without any interference from any of the previous agents. Cool. Uh, so uh, just to clarify, is it APM that's going away or is it servers? Yeah, that's a that's a good question, and that's something we try to uh, uh, address earlier on because this is a point of confusion. So it's just the new Relic Relic servers product um, that it will become end of life uh, according to those dates I mentioned before. So there's no impact necessarily to APM, although there is the legacy alerting features that I mentioned, uh, which is something that we offered uh, previously to the point that we had new Relic alerts. Um, and so those will also be going away. And if you're still confused on that point, I'd just like to point out the webinar that we're having on Thursday, which will go over the exact differences between the legacy alerting features, new relic alerts, and it'll go uh, point by point and show you um, exactly what you need to be aware of as it as it concerns the legacy alerting features. But definitely APM's not going anywhere. We love it. <laughs> Our customers love it, so you don't have to be worried about that. Okay, I'm just gonna uh, answer two more questions real quick. Um, 
So actually, I'm going through questions right now, and it seems like we have a common theme here, uh, two common themes of questions. The first one being, um, I go to the infrastructure tab and it just shows me start my 30 day trial. Why do I see no information there? Um, that's because New Relic Infrastructure is an entirely new and separate agent from the existing service agent that you may have installed. So definitely recommend installing the New Relic Infrastructure agent on your host in order to access the infrastructure tab and get access to that data. Um, and you can seamlessly run the New Relic Infrastructure agent alongside the servers agent and or the APM agent on the same host without any interference or performance issues. Um, and the second question is, did I miss pricing? How do I go about pricing? Who should I talk to about pricing? Um, so definitely recommend reaching out to your existing account executive um, at New Relic for pricing questions. However, um, if you're unsure about who your account executive is, um, I would reach out to um, either myself or Aaron Newcomb, uh, whose email is provided on the screen and or create a support ticket at support.newrelic.com. Great, thank you all for joining. Uh, we're out of time here and uh, as much as I'd like to run over, I wanna be respectful of you tuning in. Uh, again, if you have any questions that we didn't get to or, or uh, wanted further clarifications, please feel free to email us uh, webinars at newrelic.com. If you submitted them, uh, in the webinar control panel, we'll, we will get to them if we didn't answer them on the air. And don't forget that after you close the presentation here, uh, you will be prompted to uh, fill out a brief survey if you, you have uh, any feedback for, for myself, our speakers, the content, etc. And we always appreciate that so that we can improve. So uh, just wanted to say thank you and I'll hand it off to you all if you want to have any closing remarks. Yeah, um, I again, I just want to thank you. Um, New Relic Infrastructure has been a product that's sort of been built on customer feedback. That's how I like to think about it. Um, uh, I'm definitely speaking to customers on a daily basis. I'm going to be at FutureStack, at Booth Duty, and presenting. Um, and I'm at several conferences um, across the year, um, speaking with customers, answering questions, um, just sort of absorbing more information. So if you have any questions and or would like to uh, get a demo from our team, feel free to reach out to me. My email is Kirani, K-I-R-A-N-I, K-I-R-A-N-I at newrelic.com. Um, it's my first initial of my first name and my last name at newrelic.com. Um, and you, if, if and when you do install New Relic infrastructure, uh, you may see a little chat widget from me pop up on the bottom right of the window that directly um, sends the uh, questions to me and I will respond to them. Thank you. And my email's on the screen. Feel free to contact me, <laughs> but you can't go wrong with contacting Krishma either. She's super responsive. So thanks everybody for joining today and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.